Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I have five new coastal Halloween DIYs to show you, all using supplies from the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Spot at Target. So let's get started. Our first DIY, I'm going to use a couple of items from Dollar Tree, a little wood bat, and just one of these signs. It doesn't matter what size. I kind of like the size on this. Um, the only thing I don't really like about these is they have like this little bump out cardboard panel and it did come off, but I got to admit it was way more challenging than I thought. Now, if I got it hot with my heat gun, it would peel off. I really didn't want to tear like what was underneath of that because I really want a smooth surface. So with a little heat, I was able to get that all off. Now... These aren't very heavy duty signs. I would prefer a thrift flip for this, but we're gonna do Dollar Tree sign today. So I'm just gonna go over it with ivory acrylic paint just to cover up all the writing and business that was going on on there. And we're not gonna leave it that color. I actually want it to be like a beachy blue color. Yes, I love blue for every season. <laughs> And so I'm gonna mix, this was half Caribbean blue, half ivory, just whatever you've got to get a nice beachy color of blue. And we're just gonna go over where we painted it ivory as well. Now the sides were kind of wood-like, which could be kind of coastal, but I didn't think it really kind of went with it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and paint those that pretty blue color as well. I really wanna do like a fun bat sign, something that's very Halloween, but I also kind of want to make it coastal by using this color. I'm not going to use like shells or anything like that, but I'm really going to rely on this beachy blue color. So I kind of want to get it just right. And then I want to add the bat to the front of this. And I'm also going to use my Cricut to add some vinyl on it and make it a cute little sign for Halloween. So let's get started on the bat. This is like the slatted bat. It would probably work um, with whatever. I don't know if they have a different version of this one. I'm not sure, but I really kind of liked the slatted one. Um, it kind of reminds me of a coastal feel with the different slats of wood like that. And so let's paint it. I'm just gonna use acrylic paint again and a foam brush. And we're gonna go all over and give this a nice coat of black. This raw wood from the Dollar Tree is so easy to paint. It does soak it up a little bit though. Now I went ahead and painted all of the front panels in that color. Now there is like a board across the back that holds them all together. So I do switch to a tiny brush just to kind of paint that as well. I don't want any like natural wood showing through. So I also decide to go around all of the edges because I didn't want um, from the sides for you to be able to see the raw wood, I thought I would try to get it as black as I can. I think it's gonna be really pretty, the black contrast against the blue sign. So once I get it painted all black, I'm just gonna lightly distress this all over with some ivory acrylic and a chunky brush from Dollar Tree, using a baby wipe if I get too much, and just to kind of give it a little bit more of a coastal vibe. I think he looks really cute. I thought it would be really fun to hang him upside down like a bat hanging upside down and do a fun little sign like that. So that's my plan is to have him hang kind of like that. And then I'm also gonna measure um, some vinyl and I made a little, um, some words to go on the sign. So I kinda wanted to see how much room I was gonna have left over once I attach that bat, which I haven't done yet. So I'm gonna use this 
I um, saved this Cricut file. I will post it in the description below if you want to recreate it. They have a lot of fun Halloween um, fonts in the Cricut design space. And so I'm just using black vinyl. I get that in bulk on Amazon. And my paper transfer paper that you know I love, I get that on Amazon as well. I'll post a link to both of those as well down in the description. And we're just gonna add the vinyl straight to the sign. Now, you know, I usually like to hand paint my signs, but for a Halloween sign, something that's gonna be out for such a short amount of time, vinyl's totally gonna be fine. And I'm just gonna sand it to kind of work that vinyl into it. I also sand around the edges to take off a little bit of paint around the edges to make it look a little bit more rustic. Now, I don't want the vinyl to fall off, and so I do seal it with some matte Mod Podge um, and I'm gonna go over the whole sign so it has the um, same matte finish when it is done drying. And that's just gonna help keep that on there. And you really can't tell that it's final on the sign. It looks pretty good. But I wanna kinda distress it like I did the bat. So I'm just gonna very lightly dry brush the black vinyl with some ivory acrylic to kinda give it more of a hand painted feel. And now we can attach the little bat here to the front. I want it to kind of look like he's hanging. And so I'm gonna use some hot glue just on this board here and just glue that onto my sign, easy peasy. This is kind of probably a medium size sign for my shelf. Um, I already had one project that I had done last year, which is my a black cat made out of rope. And I will post a link to that video um, down below if you have not seen that. And I wanted to make a bunch of decorations that would go well with it. So it's very tippy, especially with that bat on the front. So I'm just gonna glue a giant Jenga block. I get those at five below um, to the bottom just to weigh it down so it doesn't tip over. Now I wanted it to look like he was hanging from something. And so I just had some of this leftover rope from some of those shelves from the Dollar Tree. You can kind of use whatever kind of rope or twine you have. And I thought it would look cute if he was hanging from that twine. And that, you know, that jute's gonna give me kind of a coastal feel as well for this project, since I'm not using shells or anything like that. And I'm just gonna glue it inside the corners of our sign here in the back. And this does have a hanger on it too, so you could totally hang this if you had one of those kind of signs. And it kind of looks like he's hanging from that. And so this first Halloween DIY is complete. I think it's so cute. My son got a kick out of it for sure. And this is how it looks on my shelf. Super cute, super fun. I love it. Okay, our next DIY is I got one of these little plastic skulls from the Dollar Tree. And I thought it would be really fun and coastal to make a driftwood skull. So we're gonna attempt it. Now, I wouldn't say this was hard, but it was a lot more time consuming than I probably thought it was gonna be. So you'll see, I'm gonna have to speed it up a ton. But first I'm gonna give him a little makeover. I'm just using some ivory acrylic on his teeth because I don't know. I don't think they really looked very much like teeth that color. And so I thought I could brighten them up a little bit and give him a nice little cheesy grin. <laughs> now his eyes were black, but they weren't real black. So I'm also using a tiny brush and some black acrylic and just making those eye sockets and like the nostrils of our skull, like super dark. Now those places, the eyes, the nostrils, and the mouth are the only places I'm not gonna put driftwood. So I buy this driftwood at Target. It is a driftwood vase filler. And my Target has it all the time. It's usually $10, but you know, it does go on sale. So I always watch out for that and I always try to stock up. I like to dump mine out so that I can actually look at it and see what I've got. Now, anytime I do a driftwood project, you always hear me say it's like a puzzle to put together. Now, exactly the same on this one. I'm starting on the face because I thought the face would be the hardest part and yeah, it probably was because I was trying to find little pieces. Um, I didn't want to overlap the eyes or the nostrils or the mouth too much. I didn't want to take away from the shape. 
The good thing about this driftwood from Target, and I will post a link below to the online um, link to that, um, is that it is fairly thin. So if a piece is too long, it's fairly easy to break it with your fingers or cut it with scissors if you need to shorten it. Because as you can see, there's just lots of round edges and curves and all kinds of crazy stuff going on on this. And I think I have this like 12 times speed. I might speed it up even more here um, because I don't want to keep you here all day. But I just wanted to kind of show you the full process of turning this ugly little plastic skull from the Dollar Tree into a work of art. I absolutely love how this turned out. It's so fun and it's nothing like anything I have in my decorations. So super excited to put this out for Halloween. Do you guys celebrate Halloween in your household? If so, is it anybody's favorite? You'll have to comment below and let me know. My son, it's his absolute favorite. He loves it. He got so excited when I broke out all of the Halloween decorations. And I made some great stuff last year. So I pulled out some really good stuff. And I wanted to add to it with some more BT projects. So the face probably was the hardest part. But... You know, the back and the crown and all that parts of the skull um, was kind of equally as challenging because you kind of have to find the perfect piece. So I always try a piece on first before I actually glue it down. I'm not too worried about like any of the holes in between the pieces, any of the gaps. I didn't really have any big ones. And if I did, I tried to find a little tiny, tiny piece of driftwood and just glue on top because you can always layer them if you need to. And the color of that skull is not real different from the color of the driftwood, so it's not gonna be real obvious if there was any gaps. I'm gonna cover everything here. So I'm covering everything except for the very bottom, like of the jaw area. I don't end up covering that part. I thought about displaying this on a base, but I loved it so much, I decided to leave it just as is and to display it like this. Now, when I got to the bottom, um, I thought I was done, and then I do end up having to add a little bit more to it to make sure that it sits up exactly the way that I want um, because it has the tendency to kind of lean back, just the design of the skull. Here I'm just using my heat gun to get off any little strands of glue, and look how cute he is. <laughs> He is kind of cute. I don't know. Maybe it's that cheesy grin. Now, I thought his teeth were maybe a little too bright, like he'd just been to the dentist. So I'm going to distress him a little bit with just a little bit of antique wax by Waverly. Wiping off any excess with a baby wipe to kind of look a little bit more older and rotten like a skull would have. Don't want him to look too good. And... There's our little driftwood skull in all of his glory. I love him. I thought about staining him more, but um, I kind of liked him this light wood color. I think it just looks really cool in the contrast against the eyes and the nostrils. He's going to get ya. And here is how it looks on my shelf. I displayed him next to some blue coral that I already have, and I think they go really well together. Okay, guys, check out this ghost I got at the Target dollar spot. Is this not adorable? It's $5. It's really big, but it's worth it because it's perfect. It's like a white distress, perfect for coastal. It's got the light wood, perfect for coastal. Um, I just wanted to add a word to it. So I got this little boo wood word from the Dollar Tree, and I thought that would be a perfect little sign for the front. So this is going to be like... The easiest crafty beach DIY ever, maybe. <laughs> so I just want to paint it that beachy blue that we were using before. And so I'm going to mix half Caribbean blue and half ivory. And I'm going to use like a little makeup sponge. One of my viewers taught me this trick. Um, anytime you're working on like these little um, thin wood signs and stuff from the Dollar Tree, a makeup sponge really does the trick because um, you're not going to have to worry about getting too much paint dripping over the edges. 
So I'm just gonna go over with that and do a nice coat of blue all over. I really want my colors today to be this beachy color of blue with a lot of white and black, but also some of that like raw wood color that's along the frame of the ghost. And I just love him. I think he's so cute. They had some really cute Halloween stuff at the Target dollar spot, but I had to go to another town to get him. I don't know why. Um, our dollar spot didn't really get very much Halloween in or I missed it. I don't know which. I'm in there every day because um, this part of my job is I'm a shopper and I um, didn't see anything at my store. But I went to the next town over when I was there for something else. They had tons of Halloween stuff. My um, dollar spot's even putting out Christmas stuff already. Now to make this hanging sign a standing sign, I just glued two of those giant jangle blocks to the back and... I told you this was going to be easy. This DIY is complete. I think it looks nice and beachy with those colors. And I displayed it on my shelf here next to my little black rope cat from last year. And I think it's so cute and simple. Okay, guys, I wanted to take a quick moment and tell you about our private Facebook group. I'll post a link below. You're going to love it. You'll get to see what everybody else is working on, and everybody's so creative. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest at Crafty Beach on YouTube, and I would love to see you over there. Okay, our next find. This is also from the Target Dollar Spot for $5. I actually found this one at mine, and it is a coffin shelf. It's made out of that great wood, that same wood that was along the frame of the ghost. And I thought we could make this look super creepy. So to start off, we're just gonna fill it with some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree. I think that looks really creepy. And what I wanna do is like a creepy coastal scene, like something that would have washed up from the bottom of the sea. So, that's my plan. Now I chose one of these little tiny skeletons from the Dollar Tree. These are the ones that are on a string. Definitely the smallest one that I have and I think he's gonna fit in the bottom part of this little coffin shelf just perfect. I kinda want him to be buried under the Spanish moss um, but I want him definitely peeking out like his feet, um, his head. They aren't together very well, so I, I did pop them apart accidentally, which might make it even creepier if you wanted to have separate parts. And then also one of these little skulls from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna put that on the top part of the shelf. And those come in the little bag like this at the Dollar Tree. You get a whole bunch of them, and I love those. Now I thought we could add some creepy decor. I got this little black succulent at my Dollar Tree. Just in with all their other succulents. I thought it was really interesting because it was black. Um, this one has a little clip on it to clip it onto things. And at first I thought I could leave that on there. But when I kind of put that down into my Spanish moss, I realized you could kind of see the shininess of the silver little clip. So I decided just to pull it off. Now that was kind of heavy and I'm gonna stand this up so I don't want it falling off. So I'm gonna try to glue this down in there because I um, want that to, it's gonna be defying gravity when I stand this thing up. Now I wanted some like corally pieces and I got these black Halloween flowers at the Dollar Tree and they really have this part that kind of looks a little bit like black coral. Um, it's underneath the spider, so it's probably really spider web, but we're gonna pretend like it's coral. So I just have to cut the spider off, and then I can pull that off. It's like two pieces attached together. I kinda want them to stay together, and that way I'll have one little piece of black coral for the top and one piece for the bottom of our little coffin. And I thought I would just kind of arrange those like that, kind of spreading those across making sure that I have enough Spanish moss in there to kind of build that up. I, you always need more of the Spanish moss than you think. <laughs> now these are the little grow animals from the toy department at Dollar Tree. I got a little sea turtle that's already black, so that's perfect, and a little stingray. Now the stingray is like black and red, and I don't have any red in any of my projects today, so. I thought I would just take some black acrylic paint and paint the rest of him black as well. 
That way I'll have two little creepy Halloween sea creatures, a little stingray and a little sea turtle to go in my coffin. And I'm gonna do one on the top and one on the bottom. Again, attaching with hot glue because I'm gonna stand this up on its side and I don't want these little guys to fall out. Okay, I thought maybe a starfish might look creepy too. So I have these little tiny starfish. I get these on Amazon. It's kind of the same color of bone. So I think that's gonna be perfect as is. And I'll post a link to my Amazon. Um, I'll post an Amazon link to those starfish below as well. Hopefully I'll remember to post all these links. And then uh, maybe some like dark colored seashells. These are like those mini um, seashells from the Dollar Tree that come in the little bottles. I like to sort mine out so they are ready to go whenever I wanna decorate with them. I'm just gonna fill in a little bit more Spanish moss and make sure everything is glued down. I do a little dark nail shell on one of the leaves. I thought that would make it look kind of more realistic. And this is really coming together. It's very creepy. It's also very coastal. So I'm really digging it. And then maybe another little gray seashell here on the bottom, kind of all working in the same color scheme. I noticed that skeleton didn't really have dark eyes or nostrils like the skull on the top. It was kind of all one color. So I just use a black Sharpie and try to color those back in just to provide a little bit of contrast. It's looking good. Now I love the wood around the edges. It's a perfect color of that wood, but the edges are kind of like an MDF. They're not as pretty. So I thought we could dress those up a little bit and make it another little coastal touch by adding some twine. This is uh, the jute twine. I get this at Walmart by the roll. It's pretty inexpensive and it's a thicker twine than you're gonna find at Dollar Tree. And it's perfect for the width of this. And I'm just gonna simply, a section at a time, hot glue that to it. I definitely want it to keep its shape. And this is gonna cover up that unfinished wood part there, but it probably would have been just as cute without it. But I like the little extra touch of a little bit of rope. I'm gonna cut that off and I'm also gonna do like the little shelf in the middle by cutting another piece and gluing that on. And we have a little coastal Halloween coffin. I think he's really creepy and really cute. Who knew that sea turtles and stingrays could be creepy Halloween decorations? This is how it turned out and this is how it looks standing up on my shelf. So cute. <laughs> okay, our next DIY is going to be some of these seahorses. These are the seahorse skeletons from the Dollar Tree. Um, they can be hard to find, so keep your eye out. I know that last year they came in later than the rest of Halloween decorations. And I noticed like with the little skeleton mermaids, like my Dollar Tree just got those in and they've had all the other Halloween decorations for a while. So it's probably just a matter of them finding the box, but definitely look for them. They're so cute. And I thought I would do two of them. I'll do a set. The eyes were kind of a brownish red and I thought that didn't look super creepy. And so I'm just gonna use my black Sharpie and color in the little eye sockets on both of our little seahorses. Now I don't really know why they make the skeletons this brown color because that doesn't really remind me of a skeleton. I think it should look more like bone. So I'm just gonna use ivory acrylic paint and a brush um, and kind of go all over. I'm using a brush because I do kind of want to get in all of the back scales and the ribs and stuff like that, um, but not too much. I don't mind the brown color inside and I also leave a little bit on it. That way I don't have to go back and distress it. And so I'm gonna do the same thing here with seahorse number two. And I think they look way better this color. I wish they came that color. Now they have little shells on the bottom. I'm gonna paint those ivory as well, but what I found is they're lightweight plastic and they just wanna fall over all the time. So I thought we would just make a simple base and we'll make a little display for these. So I'm just gonna use, I had a little oval wood sign from the Dollar Tree and I thought an oval would be the perfect shape this happened to be a hanging one, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off the hanger. 
and I thought we could make another little ocean scene, kind of similar to what we did in the coffin, something that would go with these creepy seahorses. So I'm gonna glue this one to the front. Now I thought it would be better if like my second seahorse was raised up a little bit higher than my first. And so I just went and grabbed whatever I could find, <laughs> the, some little wood oranges, and they're made out of wood. And I'm just gonna glue those on just to make a little base for the second seahorse, just to slightly raise him up a little bit taller than the first one. I thought that would make it look nicer. And I'm just gonna glue that on to the oranges, <laughs> the little wood circles. Now, I thought we could decorate the base, and so that's why I haven't painted it or anything like that. And I think there's nothing creepier than like the Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree. Um, I think I like it better than any of like the Halloween decoration kind of stuff. I think this looks super creepy, especially for a coastal Halloween. So I'm just gonna attach that to the wood sign with hot glue, kind of just working a section at a time. I don't care if a, any, a little bit of the wood shows through, but I'm definitely trying to go at least over to the edges. And I kind of want to cover up like that little base that I made for the back um, seahorse. I'm just trying to get as much coverage as I can. Um, don't worry about it not being an oval. You could always clean that up in a minute once you get it all glued down. So that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna use my scissors and snip, snip all the way around until it cleans it up and gives it more of an oval shape. Now that kind of looks creepy as is, but I thought we could take it up a notch and definitely make this look like the bottom of the ocean by adding a few more coastal touches to our Halloween decorations. Again, I'm gonna use some of those grow animals from the Dollar Tree. I think those are perfect. I'm also gonna use a little blue starfish that I have. I also ordered those on Amazon and I will try to post a link for those as well. They're super cute. And uh, the, the sea turtle, of course, is black already. It's perfect. But this bright red crab was a little too bright red for me. I thought about painting it ivory for a minute, one of the other colors I'm using today, but I decided to go with black. I think the sea turtle looked good in black. So I'm gonna make our little crab black as well. Now you can still see kind of some of the red around the edges. So after I dry it, I just flip it over and paint the other side as well to try to cover up as much as that bright red as I can. And I thought these would be some really fun um, decorations to decorate the bottom of our seahorse. Um, the blue is perfect color that we've been using today in that starfish. And I'm just gonna start hot gluing these little ocean creatures on. Our little sea turtle can go over here. I love sea turtles, so it needs to go up front and center. <laughs> our little um, blue starfish here. And I'm gluing those down because I definitely don't want them falling off of the display and maybe the little black crab over there. There's not a lot of contrast between the Spanish moss and the black creatures, but for it's Halloween, I really wanted to do black. Now, again, these are those little tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree. So I thought we could pick out some of these and we can decorate some of that mossy area with those as well. And I can kind of use any of the colors here are really gonna work with, um, the colors that we use today for our projects. So we did the blue and the black, the blue and the black bat. We had um, our little driftwood skull. We had our little boo ghost. We had our little creepy ocean coffin. And now we have some little skeleton seahorses. Super cute. So just scatter a couple more of those shells around. And look at that, super cute. Now, the only thing I didn't really love about it is that you could see the raw wood on the edges of the sign on the bottom. So to remedy that and to give it even more of a coastal touch, I'm just gonna use some of that thinner brown rope from the Dollar Tree, and we're just gonna make a very simple rope border to go around this. 
I would love to thank you so much um, for watching this video to this point. You uh, mean so much to me and I really appreciate all of your support here on my Crafty Beach channel. I have been posting a lot of shorts. I'm trying to get monetized on Facebook Reels is the reason I need to hit 100,000 views over there. So I know it's a lot, so bear with me. <laughs> I have to post a lot to get a lot of views. And um, we're almost to 10,000 subscribers, so that's really exciting, and I'm planning a nice big giveaway to celebrate. And this is how our DIY turned out. You'll have to comment below and let me know what your favorite project was today, or just come say hi. I always love to read all of your wonderful comments. Okay guys, the last thing we're gonna use is, um, this is just some of that fishing net from the Dollar Tree. You know I don't love it because it's got like the big holes. I don't use it a lot for decor, but I think it's gonna work well just to line one of the shelves to give it another little coastal touch, a little bit more coastal than the creepy cloth. Okay, it's time for the final reveal. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Halloween. It's a rainy night coming late out of the dojo No lights dark out on the parking lot Looking for my car, thought I left it here before Got a feeling that something ain't right Moving shadows, hear the sound of two feet See my car where my keys, kinda getting spooky Oh God, now it's coming from behind My cell is gone dead as I slowly turn around and oh, oh. Suddenly my brain's letting go and I laugh out loud as my elbows crash into an eyebrow Thinking what the hell I'm gonna make it somehow Run into a closed liquor store, break the window Grab a bottle of gin, take a swig